And as I just clumsily alluded to, the IPOS dead interval interface command is how you would change the dead interval. Now this command will change the dead interval, but it will not affect the hello interval. So it will not set the hello interval to one quarter of your dead interval. And you can see here there is an option for minimal hello multipliers, and that looks interesting, and it is interesting. That enables a feature called OSPF fast hellos. We will touch on that, just a 30,000 foot view at the end of the lesson, and there will be a specific lesson on that but basically that allows you to set up sub second OSPF hellos it's pretty cool but we will have a separate lesson on that so let's just stick with our plain Jane setting the dead interval in seconds here so you can see here again we're taking a look at this interface and we see that the hello is set to 10 seconds and the dead timer set to 40 seconds what we're saying here is that we will miss up to four OSPF hello messages before we declare this neighbor relationship down so in this case we're saying well you know what 10 seconds is fine I I'm, I'm cool with that but 40 seconds seems like a long time. If this guy's down, I want this to be declared down quicker than this. And, you know, I'll let it miss two hello messages. So in this case, you're going to go ahead and set the IP OSPF dead interval to 20 seconds, which is twice the hello time. Now, remember, this does not automatically change the hello timer here. So when we go ahead and take a look at this, we can see the hello timer has remained at 10 seconds and the dead timer has changed to 20 seconds, which essentially now means that we can miss up to two OSPF hello packets before we declare this neighbor relationship down. One thing to consider, like I said in the first slide, is that this will affect your wait timer. Generally, that's not a big deal. It's not going to take usually 20 seconds for designated router election to occur, but just keep that in mind. And that could be another one of those tricky questions where you get something on the CCIE lab that says, okay, I want you to set the OSPF wait timer to um, 18 seconds. And it's like, wow, you're looking through all your documentation. You can't find any way to issue, you know, say the IP OSPF wait interval command. If you realize that the wait interval is provided by the router dead interval, then you can go ahead and just set the dead interval for 18 seconds and the wait timer will be the same. One quick caveat here is that you probably, okay, you do want to make your dead timer a multiple of your hello timer. So in this case, I wouldn't want to set this to say, uh, uh, you know, I can wait 18 seconds because 18 seconds with a hello interval of 10 seconds means that basically you can only miss one. So it's gonna send out a hello message, it's gonna replenish that. If you miss one, it's gonna go down to eight seconds and then by the time it sends another one, you're already two seconds past your dead timer and the neighbor relationship will be declared down. If you wanna mess with these, you pretty much want to make this a multiple and don't make it a multiple of one. Don't set them to the same because that will give you endless headaches. So as I stated earlier, one of the important things with these two timers is that they must be agreed upon by all neighbors. Otherwise, the neighbor relationship will fail. If the neighbor relationship fails, you will never get an adjacency and you will never get routes from those neighbors. So these are very important. If you go ahead and muck with these, make sure that A, you put a lot of thought into it and B, you go and change it on all the neighbors. Otherwise, you will end up with neighbors in a down state. We can see this here. We've gone in and we've changed the default IP OSPF hello interval to five seconds. You know, I, I am assuming that prior it was 10. It doesn't really matter here. And what I've done here is I've gone and issued the debug IP OSPF hello. I'll issue my standard caveat. Do not do this on a production router because this can be a career limiting decision. In the lab, it's fine. On a production router, you better have the appropriate people sign off and you better know what's going to happen with your router. So be careful with debugs on production routers. Anyways, first I should show you that we do have a, an OSPF neighbor relationship between R1 and R2. It's interesting because you can see the dead timer here. So that's a timer that will count down. Every time a hello packet comes in, it will replenish this to its default value. Anywho, so we go in and we change the hello interval value. So now we can see here that we have sent out a hello and this 224.0.0.5, that is the all OSPF router um, multicast address. We cover that in a different lesson, but anyways, it's sending out a hello and it receives a hello. Cool, everything's cool, we're getting hellos back. Uh, but then the bad news, mismatched hello parameters from, and this is just R2's IP address. And what's cool is that with the IP OSPF hello debug, it will tell you what the problem is. So you can see here that the dead R, which is received, so the dead timer that we received is 40 seconds. The dead timer that we have configured, that's what the C stands for, is 20 seconds. Well, the reason it's 20 seconds is because we went and changed our hello interval to 
to five seconds and iOS is going to go ahead and set the dead interval to four times that. So that's how we came up with that 20 seconds. Here we can see the hello timer and you can see that received is 10 seconds and configured is five. It's going to do this probably four times. Well, actually, because we've changed the dead interval to 20 seconds, it's going to really do it twice and then it's going to go ahead and declare this neighbor relationship down and it's going to give you the neighbor down reason is the dead time has expired this you will see in your normal logging depending how you get your logging set up but generally you're going to see this if you just have logging buffered these bits you will not see unless you have the debug running so you're not going to it's not going to show up and say hey dumbass you've got a mismatched hello interval this is a very good command, especially for labs. Gonna make one more aside for the CCIE lab. You might end up in a situation where you are required to configure an OSPF neighbor relationship between a router that you control, in this case R1, and let's say R2 was something that you don't have access to. So you go ahead and you set up your OSPF process and you get everything going and you see that it will not establish a, a, a neighbor relationship. You can do this debug again in the lab and you can see here if it is a mismatch between either the hello timers or the dead timers, you will be able to see this with this output here. I'll show you what the received and the configured is. So they can be tricky and say, okay, well, you know, go ahead and create a, a neighbor relationship with this router. And then they don't tell you that they've gone in and goofed up the hello and or dead intervals on there. This is a way that you can find out what those intervals are set to on your neighbor device. So pretty good command to have in your toolbox, especially if you are going in to sit the CCIE lab exam. Or in the real world, again, caveat, wah, 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 don't do debugs unless you know what the hell you're doing. It could be that you are trying to configure a neighbor relationship with a router that's owned by a different company, say, and they're like, huh, well, it's not our problem. It must be your router that's fucking up. If you run this and you find out that they've, you know, it'd be kind of odd that they would do this, but you know, there's a lot of odd stuff out in the network. So you would get this information. So it has applications outside the CCIE lab as well. So you've got through this lesson, you're like, oh man, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to secure myself a big bonus. I'm going to be a hero on my network. Cause what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of our OSPF links and I'm going to take the hello timers and the dead intervals. I'm going to send out hello packets every one second. And then I'm going to have the dead timer set to two seconds. So our OSPF convergence time will be tip top. You know, if something goes down, we're right on it. You're going to want to take into consideration a couple of factors before you go out and do that. It is true that these timers are directly related to OSPF convergence time. The other aspect there is that if you change it on one, you're going to want to change it for all the neighbors as I've gone through ad nauseum, but that is very important. So with the way that it's set up by default, Cisco iOS allows you to miss four consecutive hello messages before the neighbor is set to down. And we can see this here that I got the time in seconds. It's not exactly 10 seconds. That's one of the things you want to keep in mind. So that's why you don't want to set the hello interval and the dead interval to be the same. I mean, that would be ridiculous. But say we set them both to 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, you're expecting to receive a hello packet, but then your dead timer is 10 seconds. So it's either going to be up for just a little, little, little bit of time or never come up because you'll expire your router dead interval before you get a, a packet coming in there. Uh, I would say the minimal that you want to do is two and even keep into consideration there that if you set this to uh, two times your hello interval, again, not exactly 10 seconds. So keep that in mind. I would say two is the minimum. But here, this is just showing you that after four missed hello packets, the uh, OSPF agency will be dismantled. It'll go from full to down and it will give you the reason of a dead timer expired. Like I stated earlier, it can be 40 to 120 seconds before that you know that your neighbor is down. So you might want to adjust that depending on your network. I mean, 120 seconds, that's two minutes. That's a long time in the network world. So you may want to tweak it to increase that convergence. So to decrease that convergence time, you could do one of two things, or you can include both of them actually. So the first thing is to configure the hello interval. And we looked at this command earlier, so we know how to do this. So in this case, we've set it to one second which is the uh, IP OSPF hello interval one under zero zero slash zero. We're coming back with our handy dandy debug IP OSPF hello command. And what we're seeing here is rather than going out every um, 10 seconds or 30 seconds, they're going out every one second you can see here. And the benefit of that is that our dead time is set to four seconds by default because it's four times. So we miss four hello packets and we discovered that our neighbor is down in four seconds rather than, you know, 40 seconds or 
120 seconds. So we speed up convergence that way. The second way that we can do this is with uh, changing the dead interval, the router dead interval. And in this case, we have changed it from 40 seconds to 20 seconds. So we're still going to send out hello packets every 10 seconds. We're cool with that, but we don't want to wait a full 40 seconds. We're saying we missed two. That's good enough for me to declare this is down. And we can see here that we do. We miss two hello packets and then the neighbor relationship is set to down and the dead timer has expired. Some of the things you want to take in consideration are the quality of your links. And that doesn't necessarily mean speed. Speed usually isn't going to be an issue with this because uh, unless you're running OSPF fast hellos, which we will touch on just briefly in the next slide, one second is quite a bit of time. You don't want to set your hello interval to equal your dead interval. I would say the least that you can go there is a multiple of two. So if you set it to five seconds for your OSPF LOs, I would set the dead timer to 10 seconds. You have to keep in mind that you have to change this on all of your links on that OSPF network. Otherwise your neighbor relationships will go down. It will break. If you don't have control of all the devices on that link, then you're not going to be able to do this unless you work with the team that does have control of the other interfaces. Occasionally, even though the link is up, there may be times where the OSPF hello just does not make it. So you have to take that in consideration that you only want to have true down states. So while you can really crank down the convergence time, you have to keep in mind that you may be trading off fast convergence time for flapping. There might be an interface that for whatever reason it can't spit out the hellos or it's taking time to get there, blah, blah, blah. And now it's declaring down. So instead of, you know, giving it the benefit of the doubt to say, oh, you know, just send me a hello within, you know, 120 seconds. If you give me one within two minutes, we're cool. If it misses that, it's going to go down and then you have to bring the neighbor relationship back up. So again, take a look at the quality of your links and weigh the cost of quicker convergence versus the chance that you may have more issues with the neighbor going down. Anyways, generally you can you can set it down lower than the defaults. I don't see a problem with that. A couple things, don't set your dead interval to equal your hello interval. We'll show that on the CLI in the lab portion. And as I said before, I would make my router dead interval a multiple of the hello interval. It'll do that for you automatically. If you just adjust the hello interval, it'll be four times. Uh, if you think that that's too many hello messages and you could set to something else, but again, make it a multiple and don't make it a multiple of one. So I had mentioned OSPF fast hellos. And if you remember when you're taking a look at the IP OSPF dead interval command, there is an argument for minimal hello multiplier. So what the hell is that? What that is going to do is that's going to allow you to send sub second OSPF hellos. It's a pretty cool feature. It's uh, directly tied into the dead interval and the hello interval. We will cover this in a separate lesson. Basically, it sets the dead interval to one second and then you specify the number of hellos you want to send within that second. There will be a, a lesson on that, but I just want to give you a 30,000 foot view of what OSPF fast hellos are. The tricky bit is that even though it's OSPF fast hellos, you don't set it with the IP OSPF hello interval command. It's the dead interval command under which it's set. But anywho, let's go ahead and wrap up this lesson. So the hello interval and the router dead interval in OSPF are two timers that are used directly for network convergence. They are included in the OSPF hello messages and they must be agreed upon, both of those. Both of those values must be agreed upon between neighbors in order for a neighbor relationship to be established. If they are different, the neighbor relationship will not be established. If you have an existing neighbor relationship and you change either one of these and you don't change it on all your neighbors, that neighbor relationship will be declared down. So iOS uh, assigns default hello intervals and router dead intervals based on the OSPF network type. And the OSPF network type is based on the interface type and possibly the protocol that is running on that interface. Basically, you're going to have a hello interval that's either going to be 10 seconds or 30 seconds and by default the router dead interval will be four times that so you know doing the math it's 40 seconds or 120 seconds so what that's basically saying is cisco is saying here's our hello interval and my dead interval is four times that so what i'm saying is that you can miss up to four hello messages before i declare this neighbor to be down you can adjust the hello interval and or the router dead interval with the respective commands of ip ospf hello interval and ip ospf dead dead interval under the interface and doing so can speed up OSPF network convergence. You're going to want to put a little bit of thought into this before you do it. You need to make this change on all the neighbors. Otherwise that neighbor relationship will not work. And you have to consider the quality of your links and you know possibly the speed. It's really speed's not really an issue too much anymore, but put some thought into this before you just go ahead and crank these down. So that the convergence time is much faster. Uh, thanks once again for joining me in the packet lab. There will be a lab lesson on this and I hope to see you there. Once again, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network guy.